Hi, um, this is Comics Covered, and, uh, for the week of t- March 21st, 2018, um... You kind of bailed out on that first hello. What? You started saying, like, a really big showy hello, and then you kind of bailed on it. Anyways. You're so weird, Doug. God. Um, for episode 19, okay... Here on Comics Covered, we talk about comic books and the world around them, the comics industry, comic movies, TVs, games. We will also talk spoilers, and we'll probably swear. We'll warn you about the spoilers, though, and I'm uh, Jack. I'm a recent convert to comics. I'm here with my co-host, Doug, and he knows something I do not know. This is is the energy I've been looking for in this show. I, I think you should keep that character up the entire show. Please don't. What? Please don't do that. Please don't do what you just did. Doug? Uh, what? Uh-huh. Uh, I'm Doug. I'm our resident comics veteran, and I, for example, know who the character Ambush Bug is. Ambush Bug? Mm-hmm. All right, sorry. Um, <laughs> I still don't know what you're talking about. Like, I just coughed a little bit. Um, Ambush Bug. Ambush Bug. He, Ambush Bug. I feel like I've heard this name before. Yeah, we did, uh, I've been holding off on including the characters that we had in a, uh, Marvel DC or fake quiz we did a while back. Oh! Which had a bunch of ridiculous characters in so it. So this is fake? Uh, no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, here we go. So, I think... What if I did just do a fake character in one of these, like... I I should guess something. what it was, and we should then speculate on what the and origin then, would be. And then the reveal is just this very anticlimactic. Well, that it, that character doesn't actually exist. Yep. <laughs> okay, so ambush bug I think was DC. It is nice. Um, yes. I think you've done DC the last couple times now. I think I did a Marvel one one time in the last few episodes. I don't remember. I don't remember. Okay, ambush bug. He. It's a he. Um, I think, uh, I have to think about how this, if it's like a bug or if it's an alien bug, I think it's ambush bug. Now, do remember a couple of episodes ago, uh, we did have a spider who turned into a half pig, half spider. I know, but now I feel like you're trying to trick me with that. Um... Okay, <laughs> ambush bug, I think, was okay. Fuck you. I'm gonna. It's a. It was a cockroach. It was a cockroach. <laughs> I, I, I'm just. I, I was seriously just messing with you. But oh, I hate you. you. You go ahead with whatever. Comes no, to it's helpful. a. It's a man. It's a man that. Um, I think I'm not gonna go into origin, but I think the powers are like he can, um. It's like a multiple man kind of thing where they can make okay. themselves into a d- bunch of different like things. Maybe they can control bugs that ambush people. Maybe it's a man that, but why would he be called ambush bug? Maybe it's fine. Maybe he has like a hive mind with cockroaches and he controls cockroaches to swarm like people and that's how or cities or whatever and that's how he like gets power or whatever and he was able to do that through science i'll say i'll say he's a scientist of some sort and he's able to control like um like ant-man kind of a thing but it's not ant-man it's like grosser bugs because he's a villain um uh yeah i think that's it i think that's it do you get what i'm trying to say here sure uh so ambush bug is uh, I can't really speak to his origin because he doesn't really have an origin. Okay, he just kind of he's just kind of there. Um, but Ambush Bug is kind of like in a lot of ways DC's version of Deadpool, sort of. In that, like, he is here. I'll s- I'll send you a uh, a link to some images of Ambush Bug. But um, so Ambush Bug is he's green. And he's got big, yeah, big like yellow or orange antennae. Okay. Uh, oh wow! And then, and he's just like a he's just like a green dude, and that's just him. He's like a weird alien or something. He's an alien. Um, I think it, again, he doesn't really have an origin. <laughs> he's just, uh, yeah, he just kind of shows up. Anyways, 
Uh, okay. uh, he, so he can teleport, but his big thing is that he is super fourth wall breaking. Uh, and he's like a really goofy, almost like Looney Tunes esque character. Uh. And he's just like weird and crazy and is always referencing that, like, like, He's in a comic book and okay, so it is like weird fourth wall breaking stuff. Just Daredevil, it's not or not Daredevil, Deadpool. I mean, he's not like a parody of like ultra violent superhero comics like Deadpool was originally, but he's got that got that fourth wall thing that is very similar. Um, huh. So, what kind of stories does he show up in? Like more comedic ones, or does he? Yeah, uh, I don't remember. Was he on? X Force. He was on. Just was he on Justice League eh, for a while? I don't remember. Uh, anyways, he he was on Doom Patrol for a while. Uh, okay. When when the creator of Ambush Bug Keith Giffen was writing Doom Patrol, uh, oh, few years back. Uh, yeah, he's he's like he's a comedic relief character, you know. Okay. He's he pops up in the background in a lot of stuff. Huh. He's, Ambush bug. He's what, silly. What have you read with him that he's added like well to the mix? I thought he he worked well on on Doom Patrol. He wasn't like a big part of the book. He's best when used kind of sparingly. Um Yeah. But like he just kind of hung out at their base and like would pop up every once in a while and like he'd do some weird like Almost like the replacement in certain issues for like uh, scene setting captions and stuff. Oh, he'd like set. He'd be like, and and this is happening now in the book, or he'd do like a recap or something. Huh? You know. Uh, but he he was fun in that. He you know because he wasn't he wasn't like his his presence was was limited. When was but, he in uh, Doom Patrol? Funny. When did you read him in New Patrol? Uh, this was like eh, I was in college. That was like five ish years ago. They had like a Doom that. Patrol series then. Was it good? Uh, yeah, for like a uh, like a year or two. I feel like it. It was fun. Yeah, it was a fun, it was a fun book. It wasn't like a classic in the way that like uh some of the runs of, or I guess the Morrison run. Yeah, and. You could make an argument for the new run. <laughs> yeah. Uh, probably once it's collected someday. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it's, it was a, yeah, it was a fun, fun book. Huh. Uh, they brought it back to like kind of being, uh, kind of more the original team. Um, okay. Yeah. Niles Calder was a big part of it. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, it was fun. So is he, okay. I'm sorry, I, I'm doing this more. Is he wearing a mask, or is it actually him being green? No, that's his face. Because it that's looks like face. a mask in some things. I'm looking at the pictures on Comic Vine. It it does, but he's it's just his face as far as as far as we know. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, because well, it just goes right into his unless it's a full body suit. Because it just goes right into his uh into his body. Yeah, I love that it doesn't but, even look like he has like abs or anything it just kind of like i mean i guess that's a specific yeah. cartoon the way he's drawn but <laughs> yeah, if you're looking at the cartoon one yeah he's got like a pot belly yeah but, seriously um, okay okay cool that's ambush bug that's fine ambush bug ambush mm-hmm. bug um ambush bug i don't understand i guess he teleports that's how he ambushes and he looks like a bug yeah. so that's why you know, he's apparently bug. originally his power worked where he could teleport anywhere there were bugs <laughs> Anywhere there were bugs. <laughs> Which Isn't they apparently really got rid of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's good. I guess not in space or something, but that's probably well, why they got rid of it. We can't conceive of the concept of what a bug is in space. Maybe we're bugs in space. That, okay. Sure. Right? That makes sense. Does it not? Um, okay. Well, mm-hmm. in any case, Ambush Bug, I'm glad. Glad that's pretty uh, pretty cool. I like it. I uh, maybe I'll try and read something with Ambush Bug. I'll read the Ambush Bug uh, series, <laughs> right? They have a Deadpool series. They have to have this. Um, in any case, there, there have been Ambush Bug series. Oh, there have been. They don't go over the, yeah. his um, thing, his origin. Uh, apparently not. 
it seems to be there's like some like unreliable narrator stuff where they've got like potential origins here. Huh. But um so I don't know. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Well, we uh we've had a week, Doug. How how was yours? Uh my week my week was pretty good. I bought Infinity War tickets, so I'm oh, pretty yeah? excited for that. You're Gonna seeing go see it, it four on, hours uh, before me. <laughs> yeah, because you're you're on the West Coast and I'm in the Midwest, so uh, I'm going to be seeing it at seven Central Time on that Thursday night. So I'll be seeing it slightly before you. I'll be sure to spoil the entire thing, please, just before you go in, please, please. Uh, although it sounds like this movie is going to be six hours long, so actually, uh, like two, almost two hours and forty minutes. You saw that, yeah, right? It is super long, though. It's, it's insane. Yeah, it's almost almost three hours. Very, Love it, very though. Long. I mean. They've got like forty characters in it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, like uh, there there was like quotes and stuff coming out from um the writers and directors this last week where they people were being like, how come the TV characters aren't in it? And they were just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. have so many characters. We could have a series if we had TV characters in there. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah. Uh. So I I bought those. I'm pretty excited. I saw so. Uh, we talked about uh, Ava DuVernay is directing that New Gods movie, and yeah. so I saw A Wrinkle in Time being like, it's not getting great reviews, but like I've also heard it's like it's just because it's like overly ambitious, and I kind of want to see what her <laughs> style is. And um, let me give everyone out there just a just a little little tip just from just from Doug to you. Uh, don't 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 see that movie. <laughs> just don't, don't even see it. Don't even, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> don't waste the two hours of your life. Don't oh do it. Jesus. Uh, I didn't think it was going to be that bad. It's one of the worst movies I've seen in a number of years. Oh my god. Uh, no way. One of the worst? It's unbearable. Uh, there, <laughs> I don't want to just like spend a bunch of time just shitting on that movie. Cause I don't Spend know. a little not, bit of time though. I want to hear about it. How's Reese Witherspoon is flying kale? So they they have these all these these. Uh, I don't By know. the way, we're gonna spoil this movie. You can. Oh, we. Like, uh, I'm, I'm just... gonna spoil a little bit of this movie. Uh, but don't see it. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, they so they have these like uh, I don't know what you call them. They're like witches or they're sorceresses or something, okay. and they're played by like Reese Witherspoon and Oprah and yeah. Mindy Kaling. Um, Mindy and, Kaling's in this. Yeah, I don't uh, trust her. She, yeah, they, they're all in these, like, very elaborate, uh, costumes with, like, crazy makeup and stuff. Yeah. And then they just kind of show up and are there, and, like, they don't shoot them in any fantastical way. It's just, like, Reese Witherspoon is just in their living room in this absurd, like, wedding dress-looking thing, Mm -hmm. and she's just there, like, hanging out. And the mom is just like, hey, why are you in my house? Like, mildly confused. Oh. Well, the woman is, like, touching her son. Like, the whole movie is just full of this, like, the writing is so, so, so simplistic and bad. And they don't shoot anything with any kind of fantastical sense of, like, fantasy or, like, or that anything odd is happening. It's all okay. just very straightforward, like, but it's not even straightforward in, like, the, like, contrast between, like, the mundane and the strange or something like that yeah. that could work, you know? It's just, like, it's just there. Huh. Like, these weird people are just there. So and, they're kind of, like, trying to ground it in reality, but it's totally not it's, how reality would react to it. But it's like they don't go out of their way to make it feel real, either. They're trying yeah. to go for magical realism, but they're just using bland filmmaking like generic filmmaking techniques rather than really going for any kind of approach that makes it feel grounded you know yeah uh it, it's i know it's a kids movie but there's a difference between bad writing and writing for children yeah like i mean we both saw coco that's a great example of like amazing writing yes for children specifically or like zootopia i thought was a really really great movie Disney in general is pretty good at, uh, like, striking, like, over all their different writers, but they, like, you know, they as a company have a good eye for 
or a good ear for like what is good children's writing like the harry potter series uh, like the earlier books uh as well as throughout i mean depending on how how much you think the later books are for kids but uh like especially the early books like those books are for children they're for young younger children Uh and they are still very well written full of depth and like character development and everything and this movie is everything is the most obvious line and the most on the nose dialogue uh that's so cringy i hate that god damn it's terrible it's Jesus. Ugh. Anyway, yeah, I yeah, I, I got Oprah's, a little bit sucked into that. But <laughs> does Oprah's big face uh, really look that bad? It's just footage of Oprah, like, and they just made her big. Like they like, zoomed in. <laughs> like no, no, like they filmed her on a green screen or whatever, and they just made her big in the scene. Like there again, there's nothing fantastical about it. She's just there and large. <laughs> it's super awkward. All of that stuff. Oh, it's so terrible. Like, so, they do so weird, fantastical stuff, and they just show it so straightforwardly, and it feels, like, really awkward and uncomfortable. Because, uh. <laughs> like, it doesn't... Because It's cringy. I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, it, that movie's bad. It does not instill confidence in me that she could do a New Gods movie well. Granted, yeah. I don't know. It's a di- This was a Disney movie. Like, I don't know how... But again, like I was just saying, like Disney generally is pretty good about striking. Anyways, I don't know where the script came from, if she was involved in it or what, but. Yeah, maybe the writing is, I mean, how is the, like, I mean, you were telling the shots weren't that great either, which is. No, the cinematography, until they get to like the nightmarish, like over the top sequences that made the chill like i kept like excusing this movie being like okay it's bad but whatever a kid will probably like it even if maybe they shouldn't and then they get to these sequences that are like nightmarish and like multiple kids in my theater had to leave oh like they're just like too intense and dark and they Uh, were it's and it was in super contrast to the rest of the movie which is this like doofy like I don't know, kids' fantasy thing. Uh, Weird. Were the nightmare scenes well better done? Um, they were uh, upsetting, but they weren't. The children are still bad actors. Oh yeah, that's just <laughs> they, bad. they picked these Especially... kids because they're cute and not because they can deliver lines effectively. Oh, that's too bad. Especially since we've had so many great ch- cut ch- kid actors in the past yeah. like couple of years, like with Stranger Things or It or you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, like so sad. The, it. The last few years have proved that like you can find there are fantastic child actors out there. Mm-hmm. But also, I feel like it might be the script might be largely at fault here. Anyways, this yeah. is not a show where we hate on random. <laughs> random disney movies that come out let's hey, let's I mean, get to some more positive stuff you saw okay. a movie you I really saw liked thoroughbreds which came out last week and it's it's a very different movie than wrinkle in time <laughs> um it's great it's uh anton mm-hmm. yelchin's last film before he passed unfortunately oh, um okay. he's he's at, i mean he's great in it um but the real like i forgot their names anya taylor joy um i know her she was in split um she's great in okay. this this is so this movie is all about um like I'm just gonna give the premise. It's about, you know, a couple of girls who are from families richer than, you know, richest of the rich families, and sort of how their mental health has to deal with that in a way. Um it's very much about um uh antisocial behavior, psychopathy and stuff like that, um, and how that works. It's it's uh it's not nothing like you know it's nothing crazy like um it's not like it's very complicated it's not like it's very like it's it's just a really well done idea and really well done character arcs really well done just motivations writing um roles and it's ambiguous as hell in what is actually wrong here what is actually not wrong here um it's i i would highly recommend it it's it's very cool. good and very very cool and um yeah that's about it great um 
I recommend it. And I also started playing the game Sleeping Dogs. I just want to get that in there because I yeah. really like it. It's really, I've have heard, you played that? I've not played it. I've heard it's great. It's, um, it's Asian GTA. Yeah, kind of. Like, where does it actually, is it in China? It's in Hong Kong. Okay. Uh, and like, it's about like an American guy going over there. So right? you are a, an Asian guy that was like yeah. brought up in like kind of the hoodie area, he then moved to the U S and kind of became a cop undercover uh-huh. cop spe- specifically. Cause he had a good knowledge of the gang sure. like uh, thing. Sure. And then he is in Hong Kong undercover. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're or from China originally, then moved to the U S and are yes. moving back. Yeah. It's, it, I've, I've heard good things about that game. It seems cool. That's great. Um, you are Wei Shen. No, I'm uh, a, <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, I really liked it. We did, we're just starting it, so that's fun too. But see, Thoroughbreds, it's good. We were going between either seeing Isle of Dogs, Unsane, the Steven yeah. Soderbergh, and uh, Thorough and Thoroughbreds was just a better time and didn't yeah. have a lot of seats taken. So um, I'm excited to see those two other movies. Yeah, I week, still maybe. I need to see Isle of Dogs. I was pretty upset that I did we didn't end up seeing Isle of Dogs. We, oh, was that on the table? We have a, a movie pass, and uh, it do, does not appear to be at a theater. We can use movie pass until oh, at until like Wednesday, which isn't that long. But uh, oh, I'm exci- awesome. very excited to see that movie. Um, cool. Are you gonna see Unsane? I'm. I might. Yeah. Again, I got movie pass. I'm gonna. Uh, I'll see lots of stuff. Might as well. It looks really great. It's um. A lot of people apparently don't like it because it's too weird. I think. <laughs> Samantha <laughs> was reading. What? Did you know that whole movie is shot on an iPhone? I saw that. It looks like it's a student film, so I can understand that, but that's bit. crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, Steven Soderbergh is always like every movie he does, like he's got a weird little gimmick like that, but, um, I mean, I but like he's, it. He's, but he's cool. I, I like, I like Steven Soderbergh sometimes. Yeah. No, definitely. We, um, what is it? Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, Samantha was reading audience reviews for this Thoroughbreds thing, and there is an aspect of, well, never mind. She's just reading audience reviews, and no one should ever read audience reviews of anything, because no. don't don't base your going to movie off audience reviews. It's ridiculous. Don't do it. Ugh, it's so sad. Yeah, don't, it makes me feel so Everyone sad. go see A Wrinkle in Time because, because I'm an idiot, and yes. maybe you'll like it. My girlfriend liked it, and I'm not oh, allowed really? to talk about that movie anymore. <laughs> Oh, really? Because you were just hating on it and she was getting mad <laughs> she at you? Was, yeah, well, because she was trying to talk about stuff she liked in the movie and she was like, and the costume design was amazing. And I was just like, yeah, and they don't know how to shoot it at all. She's <laughs> an I was, asshole. I know. I felt very bad and I just stopped talking. That was all me. But, um, oh, no. Anyways. Well, hey, you know, that's, that's, I think that's good. It's good to talk about things like that. Sure. Uh, so, some some stuff happened this week, Jack. Yes, it did. We're going to go on into news. All right. See how I did your little thing, your voice mm-hmm. intonation? You, okay. Okay. So, we didn't have that much news this week, but we're going to talk about one because the full Deadpool 2 trailer dropped, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it was great. Love it. Yeah. I'm so excited for this movie. And apparently, I, I just learned this, that um this movie is going to have the guy that does the stunt coordinator, the, cor- the stunt coordinator of Daredevil, which is great. And the John mm-hmm. Wick director, we know that already. And editor, which I think is a really important thing, too. Cool. So yeah. those people within basically indestructible <laughs> guy who is great at, you know, all this shit, I think it's a perfect mix. And um we get... X- did you watch this, by the way? Yeah, this, I did. Uh, trailer. Okay, yeah. you get X Force by name. A version of it. Yeah, yeah. A version of it. So, yeah. can you tell me, is Deadpool originally the person who comes up with this, or is this kind no. of away oh, well, from the uh, uh, X Force? Is originally like a uh, uh, Deadpool and Cable spinoff, I believe. So, yeah, okay. sort of. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I I think so. So, right, it, so it, 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 it follows. Uh, it's not quite the the same team, um, but yeah. Okay. Now, do you think? Do you have any ideas about who's going to be who in this movie? Like who Terry Crews is, who like the characters in X Force are, other than uh, Domino. Uh, yeah. Other than Domino, everyone was like confused about who Terry Crews is playing. He's who is he playing? 
he's playing like a weird like side character that no one <laughs> knew who he was. I think they draw I think they I don't remember if they dropped his name in the trailer, but people figured out who he was somehow. Okay. Um So people think Psylocke is in this? Is that right? Uh I don't think Psylocke is in this. That would also be very confusing because <laughs> they've already had Psylocke in one of their yeah. X-Men movies. Uh, oh, speaking of, did you hear that um, Ryan Reynolds, they told Ryan Reynolds that he was going to have a budget of $250 million, but he declined that and instead went for just $100 million so that they couldn't, you know, they didn't want to make it this huge thing. They could have the same formula of, you know, a little bit lower budget and make fun of that or whatever. Did you hear about that? Huh, I did not hear about that. So. And apparently one of the guys he worked on the first one with didn't like that because they wanted that big budget to play around with it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, uh, Terry Crews is playing a character named Bedlam, who, huh. uh, let's see, can control electromagnetic fields. Uh, this this other character who people might be thinking is uh, Psylocke is apparently a character named Surge. Huh. I don't know. Okay. Uh, and then this guy is named Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist. Oh! Like a weird little plastic mask. Uh, Bill, it's played by Bill Sarsgaard. Skarsgaard. Oh, it. look at that! Pennywise. Um, They'll yeah. probably make a weird joke about that at some point. Probably. <laughs> Uh, anyway, this, this, this trailer, yeah, looks like lots of fun. Uh, it's like, it looks ridiculous and yeah. silly in it. And I, I'm hoping that like, now that we're out of the origin story, like this is definitely a movie that'll super benefit from like, just, just telling a story about Deadpool and these characters. Cause I feel like that first movie was honestly pretty bogged down by that stuff. I agree completely. I've, yes, that's the only thing I've known since that movie came out. It's like, I know this one was like a little bogged down by it, but I know the sequel is going to be fucking great. So yeah, I think this is very, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, pretty excited. Uh, cable looks, yeah. cable looks very fun. Oh, I was going to ask, do you think cable at some point, I think cable is not going to be the main villain of this. I think cable is going to come back and I think at some point he's going to oh, be no, like, they're, they're all going to be on the same team at some point like ca- okay. cable and deadpool are like that's that's that is a an established team like they're they're buddies oh really uh, yeah like cable and deadpool have had multiple multiple books and yeah they are the foundation of the original x-force like huh they they are they are friends uh, okay so, uh yeah they will not stay enemies in this I gotcha. story and some people think that the kid is um is kid apocalypse I saw that was some speculation. It, it, there was some speculation he he might be some sort of version of Hope uh, Hope Summers, uh, who is normally Cable's like he protects her, um, but that doesn't that seems to be like the opposite in this. Uh, hmm. Yeah, Kid Apocalypse could be an interesting choice, although we don't really have much connection to like. Uh, the established apocalypse lore from the other movie in these movies. Yeah, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? And then um, what is it? The uh, also that kid that's in it. I watched a video of him in uh, Hunt for the Wilder People. Uh-huh. I want to see that movie. Now. I really do too, because Taika Waititi, Taika Waititi is great, and oh, that, so I've great. heard I've heard that movie's great. I just haven't seen it yet. And Sam Neill is in it, and mm-hmm. it's crazy to think because like I was watching the clip that I was watching, and it was like. Oh, that's... Is that him? Yeah, he did not look like Sam Neill in that movie. I was like, oh, Jurassic Park is not right now. (laughs) (laughs) He's also got like a crazy big beard or whatever in that movie and looks like a crazy person. But um, oh, it's great! I uh, know I'm. I really want to. I should watch more Tiger Batiti and Den. Uh, have you that seen other one? What we do in the shadows? Yeah, that right? movie is so funny. That I know that I, I, movie is great. I want to see it. I want to see it. I'll do Just it. Just watch um, it sometime. I did watch. Actually, speaking of John Wick, I did watch John Wick this week. I didn't tell you that the first John Wick. Yeah. Oh, I, what'd you I, think I, of this? I really. It was great. It's great. so fun. It is really, really, and I love like. It's not like it's complicated or anything. It's no. just this nice, like, really well done action sequences, 
really well done, like really well done character development in that, mm-hmm. like it doesn't spend a lot of time on it, but you get this idea that there is this greater world behind them. And I love oh, yeah. that in movies. The, that they're behaving within it, you know? Yeah. And, and like the weird mythology they set up in this movie, like yeah. in like the, the way the world works, which they push to like way, f- they push way further in the second one. They like, Oh, I really like the second one a lot. The first one is probably a better movie. Yeah. But the I think the second one is so much more fun. Like okay. it's it's it takes like everything I liked about the first one and like pushes it like 10 times further. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's great. Uh, Wait, now slight spoilers about John Wick, but um do, do I have to worry about the dog in the next movie? Uh, I don't think, I think there's another, no, that dog is fine. The dog doesn't okay, die again, I don't think. Good, because it's a cute pit bull. <laughs> okay, I don't remember. They they also have some sort of, like, the second movie, uh, I don't think this is really a spoiler, this is, like, how the movie starts, but, okay. um, they, uh, like, the second movie just starts with, like, something happened between movies off camera to kind of incite the whole thing. Uh, oh. And they just kind of reference it, which I actually kind of really like, because that's, that's not really a thing you ever see. Uh, but um, I don't rem- I don't think they killed the dog. I think it was something about his car. Because those are like his oh, things, that his car and his dog. Yeah. Um, anyway. Interesting. Wow. And Theon Greyjoy, I feel like he could have just said everything that Theon Greyjoy said in the first seasons of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, though? Like, yeah. he's just kind of like, oh, yeah. eh, I'm yeah. Theon, eh. He did say that verbatim, like, in every scene. Yeah, exactly. That's that's <laughs> his only line. Okay, in any case, let's, uh, let's move on. We have some comics news. Oh, wait, no, it is Minor Solicitations Week. Hey! <laughs> da 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 Minor. Actually, no, that's, that's this. Well, cause there, there are not a lot of them, right? Well, I mean, it was mostly just stuff that, cause it was, it's a lot of big stuff that they announced separately from solicitations. Okay. okay so. Understandably. So we have some previous, a lot of previous announced stuff is what I mean to say. So we have this Scott Snyder, Jim Chung, and Jorge Jimenez, Justice League bi-weekly. This is the no justice thing, right? Uh, no, no justice is before this. So that's the weekly oh. series that's starting. Cause we said that last week. That's starting last month. Uh, it's going to be the month before April. this. It'll be in May, I May. think. Cause it's, this is June. You're it's right. either April or May. I don't remember, but it's May. Um, You're right. It, but it's weekly for the four weeks of that month, and then that rolls into this. This is the regular. This ju- is the Justice actual League. Justice League number. With like one. Martian Manhunter mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that boiled down crew that you like. Yeah, Martian Manhunter, um, Cyborg, Hot Girl, okay. uh, John Stewart as Green Lantern. Yeah, it'll be great. Mm-hmm. So this is, and this is bi-weekly. Okay, that should be yeah, fun. which is interesting because I think I've ex- I've explained this to you before. Uh, m- most, okay, so comics are either kind of right now, they're, they're either monthly or they're twice monthly, or sometimes they'll do like a weekly series like we just mentioned. Rarely oh. is a series they specifically call out, not that this is twice monthly, but that it is bi-weekly. They don't do that a lot? It's just, uh, it's... Usually, they're if they do this, they're twice monthly because then that gives them a little bit of flexibility to like, all right, we're gonna take this fifth week off or whatever, you know, in the yeah. in the month. But um, yeah, so it's not a big deal. It's a tiny observation, but it does mean that we will, uh, uh like aside from any like one off skips or whatever, we'll be getting an issue of Justice League every other week. Uh, so it'll have a little bit more of a set cadence to to that release schedule weird okay so they have you ever read something that's specifically bi-weekly before i don't believe so i think weird i think everything else has been twice monthly which generally generally means bi-weekly kind of other than not all the time not all the time yeah um okay yeah Weird. That's cool. Okay, interesting. Okay, so then we have Brian Michael Bendis, which, by the way, I'm sorry, I really hate the fucking advertisements in the DC books. <laughs> Bendis is coming. Fuck They're that. so I enormous. Hate, 
They're so annoying. <laughs> They're taking God. two pages of ad space up for this giant Jesus. Bendis is coming ad. Like we get it, we get it. They're, He's I just coming. I I I really liked it at first. I am also yes annoyed with them now that they've been in like everything for like a month now. But uh, every single but, one. But when they when I first saw it, I was like, oh, you guys are excited, aren't you? <laughs> but Seriously. but now but now it's yeah it's it's. They've been doing it in every book on two pages for for like are they gonna a, do a it, month. Are they going to do it until Action Comics a thousand? Which I guess isn't that long away. But like, damn, I hope I'm betting it, like, they're going to do it right up until uh, Man of Steel, his miniseries. That oh uh, god, which about. by the way, no way, they're not. This is for June. Yeah. What are you they're talking about? Do it for the next three months. I. I'm willing to bet they do it at least another month, but I wouldn't be surprised if they oh, if they keep doing it. Maybe just until Action 1000. That would make sense. Okay. In any case, the reason why we're talking about this is Brian Michael Bendis' Man of Steel miniseries, which is going to be a weekly six parts. Oh! So that's the miniseries that is uh, kind of like Before. No Justice. It's a weekly miniseries that is going to roll into his dual Superman and Action Comics runs. Yeah. But weekly six parts, yep. like, I feel like weekly is usually four parts a lot of times, right? I mean, this Avengers thing is, uh, 16. 16 I get it. Anyway, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Weekly series are weird. They do whatever. Uh, by the but, way, we're getting to the end of Avengers here. We have like five more or four more or something. Yeah, That's we're getting cool. close. It does feel like we're getting kind of to, a uh, some yeah, kind of climax. A climax. Anyway. Um, okay. <clears throat> Another previous announcement, I think we talked about it last week, was, uh, Hawkman. Okay, I'm going to do the clear. I'm going to mute it like you want me to. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. So we've got Hawkman from Robert Venditti and uh, Brian Hitch. Uh, So that's exciting. We've also got a Plastic Man mini from uh, Gail Simone that we previously talked about. Uh, And then... Oh, that's Gail Simone. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. Because she's also doing the Domino thing. When does that come out? Is that soon? Uh, I think that was in last month's Marvel solicitations. So that would be Uh, in uh, May, I think. Okay. Yeah. I'll look it up. Uh, And then I I guess I'll I'll lead these just because you're not uh, currently reading Batman. No. Uh, No, no, no. I'm going to lead it. Okay. (laughs) You told me to. Doug said I should lead these. So I'm going to do it. God damn it. So we also previously talked about the Prelude to the Wedding, and I don't know why you have this on here and why you have a bunch of stuff written under it. Prelude to the Wedding, one shots. They're written by Tim Seeley. Isn't it just one issue that all these are in? No, these are. This is announced with these solicitations. This is five separate single issue one shots. Oh, uh, that are they are, all coming out in June and in one week, or just different uh, weeks in June? I don't remember what exactly the release schedule up is but um why do they need five different books to set up a wedding they're all just they're tie-ins jack that's what they are i are they just gonna be like how these people are getting to the wedding kind of thing maybe that's i'm i'm guessing because like the whole deal is that like with this whole batman catwoman wedding spoiler for anybody not reading batman right now they're getting married (laughs) um but uh they're getting married in the coming months here, uh, June, uh, yeah, so, so, Joker is apparently not happy, or he's gonna try to prevent the wedding somehow, or whatever, but, uh, so I'm guessing he has dispatched a bunch of villains to try to stop this, is my guess. Uh, So, that's what all these one-shots are, it's, we've got Robin versus Ra's al Ghul, uh, Raish. Depending on your, what version, it might be Raish. Uh, Nightwing versus Hush. Batgirl versus the Riddler. Red Hood versus Anarchy. And Harley Quinn versus the Joker. So. Wait, what do you mean depend- depending on the version? Isn't it just a difference of of pronunciation? I mean, I'm just saying, like, they, they pronounce it differently in different live act or different stuff where they actually pronounce it, you know? Like, the, the Nolan movies, they call them Raz. Raz al Ghul. Yeah. Uh, but if you watch, like, the animated series, it's Raish. So, I don't know. Okay. I think in the Arkham City, it's also Raish. I, I don't remember. The uh, Arkham City it's, has a it, lot of shared DNA with the animated series. Uh, okay. So, I, that doesn't surprise is me. Anarchy, is Anarchy the guy that, um, 
It's like an no. That's Azazel. I'm thinking of Azazel. Yeah, Azar- What's Azrael? Anarchy? Mm-hmm. Anarchy Azrael, is. Not uh, I think as uh, Anarchy shows up in one of the Arkham games as well. He wears a gold like mask. I think he was in. He was either in City or Night, Arkham City or Arkham Night. Um, don't remember. But there's a side mission about him, whatever it is. But he. Okay. Uh, he wears a gold mask and he has a red cloak and like a like a wide brimmed uh, hat. I don't know what you call it. It's like a bowler hat, like it's round, but then it has a really wide brim. I don't know what you call a hat like that. But okay. uh, anyway, and a staff. Uh, and he's about. I totally remember. Get, at, I bet you can guess what he's about. <laughs> yes, he's about anarchy. He's about order and communism. Yes. He is about totalitarianism. Yes. Um, yes. yeah. The other thing is, I thought Hush ended up, like, in the Hush series, I thought he ended up being a different character. Like, an existing character. No, because that was, that was the whole thing, is that, like, uh, have you not read, have you read Hush? No, I read Hush. Okay. I, I was a while ago, but I remember. Well, because Hush's whole deal, which is kind of his continuing gimmick, is that he, well, in the original series, his deal was that he kept trying to mislead them into thinking it was other characters, uh, specifically, at, at, like the big fake reveal was that it was again spoilers for lots of lots of spoilers for side stuff this week, but spoilers for Hush yeah. if you haven't read it. But uh, the big fake twist in it was that they were like, "Oh, it's actually Two Face," and then it just wasn't. It was uh, oh, it, yeah. it was, he's his own character. He's uh, um, Thomas Elliot, a childhood friend of Bruce Wayne's. Oh yeah, who murdered oh, his yeah. family. Um, I remember that. Yeah. So uh, Hush, yeah, Hush is continuing deal is that he kind of like cribs the gimmicks of other heroes which i have always found kind of lame i like the the like uh plastic surgeon angle on him a little bit more where he like disguises himself as people uh because that's that's also a thing he 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 disguised himself as as bruce wayne for a uh, like a year or two when bruce wayne was dead uh it was it was crazy Anyway. Very cool. Also, I just found that Domino is out April 11th. April. Okay, cool. So that's cool. Yeah. Okay, in any case, that's the pre- those are the prelude to the wedding one-shots that were just announced for June, so that's cool. Um, how much is it based off of Marvel's um, wedding that's going to happen? <laughs> it is weird that they're both happening at the same time. That kind of stuff ha- tends to happen, but I'm I'm guessing that, like, like, why would they purposefully do that? Like, they're both just going to get lost in that, like... I wonder if they have espionage between offices. <laughs> I think it's just a really weird coincidence. The the DC one, the Batman one has been coming for a while. The the Kitty Pride Colossus one is the one that seems like it kind of came in at the last second. It's like, hey, we've also got a wedding. We're also doing that. Although mm-hmm. I guess they teased it a really long time ago. But anyway, yeah, I remember them teasing it like on February solicitations. It was a long time ago. Anyway. Uh, what else we got? Okay, so the other one that we got for DC is Detective Comics 982, which Doug has on here, that it's a jumping on point. So, yeah, it's so, a new creative team. Uh, that's cool. Previous creative Duke team. Duke Thomas, isn't that the, the signal? Uh, yes, Duke Thomas. Uh, so this is re- this issue starting an arc called On the Outside, uh, which is, sounds like it's reintroducing a... a old Batman team uh, called the Outsiders, uh, which included oh. uh, Black Lightning, who is on the cover along with Batman uh, and some other characters. Although this new version sounds like it's some other Batman-related uh, sidekick characters like like Duke Thomas and Cassandra Kane, who is a previous character from Detective Comics. Uh, okay. So cool. Well, I've, I've wanted... I've been interested in doing Detective Comics since I went to one of the OG series you yeah know? and so this uh, is a, this is a whole new creative team whole new arc so it's a perfect point to jump on if you want to try it uh and this is getting to a thousand too so maybe i'd want to stay on here till yeah 1, they'll 000. probably do some sort of big hullabaloo for a thousand and i would imagine at a thousand they'll announce something crazy with him although they've got 18 issues left so they've got some time to kill i'm very curious how the creative teams are going to work on this between now and a thousand because like but 18 twice monthly that's nine months you know nine months is a long time like they're gonna have to like they're gonna have to put like 
Uh, Brian Hill, I don't think he's going to be on here that whole time. I think he was saying his run is like more limited than that. So like there's going to be oh. him and then I assume someone else and they're probably going to split that. But so it's going to be a weird, like, I mean, I'm sure like these stories could still be cool on their own, but like, it does feel like a yeah. little bit like we're treading water a little bit, but I'm excited for the outsiders. That'll be cool. Uh, yeah. Cool. Okay. So, uh, going to the Marvel side. We have uh, some previous announced things. We have Dan Slott moving from his tenure run on Amazing Spider-Man to Tony Stark, colon, Iron Man. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's fun. And then we have Jeff Lemire and Kim Jacinto's The Century. Jacinto, but I don't know. (laughs) Jacinto. Sorry. Uh, Um, The Century, who has been introduced with some uh, new, uh, you know character development in Doctor Strange, so that should be fun how they follow up on that. If they... They will, right? They have to follow up on that, right? Uh... You're talking about the Sentry stuff? Yeah, uh, Yeah. I mean, uh, Donny Cates has another arc, I believe, after Damnation, so they'll probably do something with it. I don't know, but also the Sentry really seem to not want to have to do anything with uh dr strange after no i know that. but all that hate and everything that was inspired from sure. it like i feel like that's a good jumping on point for the oh you mean in this new series this yeah, 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 yeah. yeah yeah that'll yeah i could it's i mean they definitely have put the century more in the public con- the like comic public consciousness than he has been for a long time so yeah okay well we also have out of the pages of no surrender the immortal hulk um, and not, that's really the only one, but we also have Ant-Man and the Wasp and Multiple Man. Yeah, so we have the, that mini series, Multiple Man thing. And the Immortal Hulk idea, I feel like that's, that's, so is that kind of a general, like, change in the character that they want to have, like, happening? Cause they started it in, like, the idea in No Surrender with he cannot be killed and all that yeah. stuff. And now we also, spoilers for, well, I won't do that. Never mind. But um, in the other series that we read where he showed up, Doug, that we'll talk about later in our spoilers section, um, he showed up there, mm-hmm. which I think adds to that idea. Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, yes. Yes, I do. Um, okay. Um, so, yeah. So, that'll be fun. Those are all fun things. Multiple man mini. Maybe we'll get a little in, in uh, inspiration for that movie with James I Franco. I doubt that movie will ever um, happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, in any case, other than that, we also have a cool little, uh, you know, announcement of Deadpool 1. This is um, after the uh, tr- Do Your Own Adventure can- comes out, <laughs> which is, I think, in April or May. Yeah. I think I it's May. Remember. It's Something May. Like that. It's May. Um, so this is Deadpool 1, uh, written by Scotty Young. Scotty? That's how you spell Scotty? Scotty. Is that a nickname, or is that actually I, how I he... I don't know if that's his real name or nickname, but that's what he's credited Scotty. as, Scotty Young. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. And Nick Klein on art and cover? Is that it, or is that art and colorist? Art and cover. Yep. Art and cover. He has A and C. A slash Air conditioning. C. Yeah. He just does the AC yeah. for the building. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to mark this um, because, uh, I don't know, I haven't read a Deadpool book in a while, and Scotty Young is funny. He writes comedy stuff for, for Marvel. Uh, I'm interested to to try out a new Deadpool book. Uh, I haven't read, okay. a, yeah, haven't read a Deadpool book in a while. Okay, and this is probably because this is June, a month after Deadpool 2 is going to come out, so it makes sense for them to do yeah. it. Yeah, right? that's definitely why they would be doing a new number one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then also we have uh, an image, a previous announcement that we talked about, uh, Mark Millar and Olivier Coy Pell <laughs> just doing the magic. Did we actually talk about this? I don't remember. We did about talk this. about this very magic briefly. It, the, I brought it up specifically because uh, it's confusing because this is being published by image, but it's like owned by Netflix. Uh, Netflix what? got into the comics game with this announcement a few months back. Uh, their, huh? Their, I, I'm confused what exactly their role is because I thought they would be publishing it, but Image is publishing it. But it is owned by Netflix. It says in the solicitation. <laughs> uh, so I think they just like are kind of producing it or whatever the version of that would be for comics like they're they own the ip i think is the idea 
they're just like staking ground in like Mark Millar stuff gets made into movies a lot. And they're like, here, yeah. we're claiming any new Mark Millar stuff that we can get our hands on. It's weird. Interesting. It's real weird. Um, but anyway, I mean, maybe, yeah, that's, I mean, why would they want to publish it under their own name? Wouldn't they get more traction if it was under an existing name and they didn't want to go for the big two? So I think why would they'd they, make more you know, of a splash if it just, if they put out a comic book and it just said Netflix on it. <laughs> like, that's crazy to me. But maybe it wouldn't sell wouldn't as well. I don't automatically know. think it was, yeah, I feel like people would automatically say like, oh, this is just some, you know, random dumb stuff. I, I feel like I no? would have, if I didn't know about this, I would have assumed it was like an adaptation of a Netflix thing or something. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I get why they would do it, and they probably just don't have the resource, like the production arm, to make comics. But it's just weird because I I don't even know if it says Netflix on the cover, and so it's like, why are they even? They it must just be an IP thing. But anyway. okay, well, that's cool. That's interesting. You know, we'll find out more as it comes to, comes down. That's in June. Um, but that is June solicitations. Just so everyone knows, we're trying to find a better way to do solicitations. Um, if you uh, know of anything, just uh, tell us on Twitter or something. Cool. Yeah. Um, Doug, we read comics. Why don't we just start talking about our current comics for the week? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we had a nice little stack here. Doug, do you want to say it since I've been eating up the runtime this time? <laughs> sure. Uh, so we both read this week Doctor Strange Damnation number three, Ice Cream Man number three, Justice League number 41, Thanos number 17, Avengers number 685, and surprisingly, uh, Cave Carson has an Interstellar I number one, uh, which you uh, decided to pick up. You have not been... I did you have not been reading up. the previous run of Cave Carson, uh, but you but you wanted to this jump is on. Pretty good though. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. I think this is a well, good. We'll talk about it in a sec. Uh, but uh, yeah. I also just to shout it out. I also read Batman number forty three, December number twenty eight, Killer Be Killed number seventeen, and Superman number forty three. And spoiler warning: we're going to talk about these books specifically. Um, yes. Also, one thing before we go into this, I watched a video of uh, scenes from John Wick. Uh, where the gunshots are replaced by Owen Wilson saying, wow. <laughs> uh, why did that become a meme now? <laughs> I don't know. But why it's now? Really funny, though. <laughs> that has been a thing wow. forever, that joke. Wow. Like, but it just blew up on the internet in the last, like, couple months. <laughs> I don't know, man. But the John Wick video was yeah. great. It was awesome. Uh, was a big fan. Cool. Um, in any case, uh, so we have some covers of the week. Uh, I'm going to go first. I really liked the cover of Thanos this week. Um, specifically because... Okay, so I also have a question. Sure. Um, so with Thanos, this Infinity Gauntlet okay. is... The picture is the uh, the Infinity Gauntlet with all the stones in it, mm-hmm. punching down onto... Um, uh, so. Sorry, I'm burping. On Silver Surfer, who's in sort of an Atlas position. So he's carrying the weight of this all-powerful thing on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. Um, I like that a lot. My main question is, is the Infinity Gauntlet with all the stones always shown with the diagonal lines going into them? Or is this just supposed to be reminiscent of that Infinity uh, cover? Uh, I mean, I think pretty much any time anyone in the modern age draws the Infinity Gauntlet, they they do those lines as an homage to that cover. It's just like okay. that image is just so like so like so considered such a classic image of Thanos and the Infinity Gauntlet that like yeah, that's just that's just what people want to see when they see the Infinity Gauntlet is those those big like color X's coming out of all of the stones. Um, yeah. It, like they're transcending everything else. Yeah, it's yeah. I I, I like that look. Um, Onto infinity makes sense. I like it a lot. Who did that original cover? Do you know? Uh, a little bit of trivia. I don't know because the original Infinity Gauntlet was done by a few different artists. Uh, so I'm not sure who did that that cover that was on the first issue. Uh, I'll look it up though. But you talk about uh, this 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 cover and why you like it. I I did. You 
you described I, what it no, was. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why do you like it? Kind of why I, I like it because it. I don't know. It's it's symbolizing his conflict with Thanos while showing the power, like where the power kind of lies. Like obviously Thanos has like kind of a higher. I mean, who knows though? Because he's persevering. It's kind of a rock and a hard place sort of thing. Like. There, or in, no, 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 unstoppable force with an immovable object, sort of an idea. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's. I mean, I, I just like it in general. Like the contrasting colors between the Gauntlet and Silver Surfer, who is dark now because he's fallen. I assume is that why? I, right? I, I would guess that's the like the metaphorical design reason. Yeah, he's like he's like yeah. black and chromy rather than just being chromy. Chrome dome. Chrome dome. Um. <laughs> That's what uh, he calls him in there. Um, in any case, and then um, also I had a question. Are these little clouds coming off his fists? Is that how they like show his powers a lot? Uh, yes, that is the, the power cosmic. He, he, he blasts, he sh- shoots some blasts of it in the, it's just vague space energy, whatever <laughs> bullshit. That's okay. just a thing the Silver Surfer has. He, sh- he like, he, he blasts away, uh, Ghost Rider in in a panel I'm looking at here. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. Now I know that in in the movie Fantastic Four or two, they uh, rise they of the, say Silver, that the Surfer. Silver Surfer. Rise of the Silver. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Rise. Um. They talk about how he um gets all his power from his board. Is that true everywhere? Uh, he doesn't get his power from his board. The board is just kind of like I don't know. It's like. Not kind of part of him, I guess. I don't know. It's vague, but uh, the the board and his powers and everything, and the fact that he's made of chrome, were uh, given to him by by Galactus in exchange for yeah. not destroying his home planet. Uh, he made him his herald, so he became became the Silver Surfer through Galactus's oh. power. Yeah. Okay. 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 Interesting. So, also, I just, you know, quick, quick spoilers because this was an awesome issue in general. Um, can we talk about how awesome? Because I was thinking about doing this for my panel as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll, no, uh, yeah, I was thinking about doing this for my panel. There's a panel where Hulk is coming after Silver. Okay. Hulk is in this. That was the spoiler. That was the spoiler, basically. Um, and Hulk's coming after Silver Server, you know, saying Hulk kill or whatever. And then this image of Hulk being stopped from a chokehold from Silver Surfer, like, stopped in his tracks is so awesome to me. Because you don't see him being stopped in his tracks by people, Mm -hmm. ever. Right? Yeah, not really. I mean, unless it's another giant dude, but yeah, the image of, like, just Silver Surfer just reaching out and grabbing him is pretty pretty cool. Unexpected. So, yeah. Loved that. Loved that. And, um, yeah. This is a great issue. Everyone should read it. Everyone should read Thanos. Yeah. Big fan. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about it big in fan. more detail in a second. But uh, I'm a big Thanos of Thanos. Oh, Ooh, episode title. You're, you're a, a Thanos. Title. A Thanos. Thanos. Uh, my e. favorite cover this week was on Cave Carson has an interstellar eye. Uh, so oh. this this cover is crazy. You said on Twitter three letters longer <laughs> than cybernetic yeah. eye, and you're I right. am I am correct. That is math. So uh, I also call them cowards, and that they should make it longer. And uh, and oh, uh, the artist retweeted it. <laughs> so he, I was afraid for a second there. I was like, "Is this? Did I go too far with this joke?" And then, and no, he. Oh no! It, so uh, <laughs> anyway, so this this cover, it's the relaunch of Cave Carson has uh, a cybernetic eye, uh, in which this this team has transitioned into going rather than mining beneath the earth. They're going into space, uh, and this cover is, it's a big star field, we got a floating, I assume, Cave Carson, and then his suit's being ripped apart, and his veins, you see his veins instead of his body, but it's all, like, multicolored, and you, his eyes just floating in the middle of his head, and he's got a, the, the title is some really fun typography, and it's, uh, like, a few different fonts, and then it's... Uh, it, coming from like a speech bubble from his from his face, yeah. It's it's just like it's a really unique. From the eye. Oh, it is. You're right. Yeah, and it's it's just a really unique cover. The the use of color is really cool. And also, if you feel this, 
you feel this cover, it's got a weird texture to it. It's like, it's like, doesn't it feel like Marvel has been feeling? No, but it's it, cause Marvel has that because they have they go with a little bit more of a like a matte kind of newsprinty a little bit uh, paper, but then DC yeah. tends to uh, at least not as glossy. But this just feels like like bumpy, like rough, like all the like all the uh, the ink is kind of raised a little bit. Like you can feel the difference between the big title bubble and the star feel around it, which is interesting. Maybe I don't really get it. I don't know. Uh, anyways, I just thought that was interesting. Uh, but it's a cool, it's a cool <laughs> cover. And this, this issue was, I, it was, it was, it was, it was okay. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't like anything crazy, but I like, I like the, I don't know. I really like the yeah. art. I really like how yeah, it the looks. Art has been it's really the highlight of this series so far. Or of the previous series, and the I say. the panel structure too has is really really cool. Yeah, it's sometimes. it's very inventive. And they really play with yeah. it. Uh, so I like that. And this guy is he like huge or is he he's, like powerful? He's apparently or? growing until he implodes. <laughs> uh, yeah. he's apparently an alien of some kind, and he's dying. And he's I guess he's dying because he's growing. I don't know. It's like yeah. a disease. And he's a music artist. Yeah, like a pop artist or something. I don't know. I found a lot of this issue pretty hard to follow, honestly. Yes. Uh, no, agreed. I just really like the art, and I yeah, really like these, the panel this, structure that I want to keep this reading. Book this book is always very pretty. Yeah. I'll probably give it another issue just because, just based on, like, I read the whole previous book of this. Uh, but I hope it gets a little bit easier to follow just from a right maybe more directed towards a specific point yeah like yeah this just felt kind of meandering there were a lot of flashbacks and stuff um yeah i don't know we'll see anyway uh jack what book were you most excited to talk about this week um la dita um wait what is it um eric barvadurkel sorry <laughs> um I was most excited to talk about Damnation for a very specific reason. Okay. I love Bats. He is oh, the Bats best is thing great in comics, but- and Bats possessing Doctor Strange is the best thing in modern okay. comics. So, for anyone say that. anyone not reading this series, Bats was a dog, a Basset Hound who was Doctor Strange's dog. Mm-hmm. Or he was his friend. He was a very he good was his boy. Friend. He was a dog, who, a talking dog, who was his friend uh, a while back, and then he died. He was killed by Loki uh, on accident, and he was brought back as a ghost. And now he's just kind of like a weird sidekick character to Doctor Strange and uh, Wong. Did you say weird? Yeah. He's a ghost. Isn't a weird? He's a he wonderful. is wonderful, but he's also weird. <laughs> He's like a ghost Ooh. dog who follows them around and says goofy things. But yeah, he's 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 a bit more of an active participant in this. But yeah, uh, continue. And I love in the character pr- pr- um, introductions they have that he is a very he is good a very boy. Good. So everyone should know that he's a very good, good boy. boy. And uh, I okay, I love this issue in general. It's great. Um, it's I think um, I really like the story in general. I think it's really. I think sometimes when you have heroes fighting heroes, it can get a little confusing. It can get a little, um, uh, I don't know. It just feels really easy. Not easy to, like, it's easy to follow. Yes, it's very clear what's going on. And it's, I like the clarity that it has in a way. I don't know. It's, I, re- what am I trying to say here? The action in this book is very well done. And I think it's very, um, cool how they build the story of these action sequences um specifically with blade i love i blade is great in this i never heard of blade in comics in general and i think he's fantastic in this um they write him really well um i really like bats specifically as dr strange like when he starts staring he's like oh i've never possessed anyone before that's my (laughs) favorite thing i like when he he holds up his hand and he goes Oh, thumbs. Neat. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's fun. fun. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's, it's so great. Good boy, Bats. That suddenly feels odd. Yeah. Uh, um, but I have a question also. How does Bats know how to use the powers? I don't know. 
<laughs> Maybe he can. He, he, sa- like, he says uh, something to the effect of like, "Oh, it's weird in here" or something. So I assume he is somehow able to. Uh, oh, he says, "Wow, it is bananas in here." Uh, so I assume he's somehow <laughs> in contact with Stephen Strange's mind or something. Because uh, I think, because I, I mean, the demon thing was able to use his powers as well. So. I assume just whoever's possessing him has access to his memories and and stuff. Maybe it's maybe it just comes as instinct. I don't know. They don't really explain it. Okay, whatever. Hey, whatever. And then I also the ah, the ending of this is so great too because like you knew they weren't gonna succeed really. Yeah. Um. But. Sending Johnny Blaze up there. Like, I kind of knew this was going to happen in a way, but, like, I didn't think it was going to happen, but I kind of was like, wait, can't he just, like, Yeah, the idea of Ghost Rider Um, going against the guy who gave him his powers is, like, is, like, risky. (laughs) And it it does not pan out. No, not at all. So what does this mean? He's dead, right? Theoretically, I mean, they don't show, like, a body or anything, but like he th- took away his superpowers and threw him out of a skyscraper. So, I mean, one or no, they do show. Well, he's lying on the ground. He's bloody. Yeah, who knows? But he's probably dead. Who knows if it'll stick? But he's a he's an I, undead yeah, but kind of character. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't. But really, your predictions that he that they bring him back. I mean. I don't know if they'll bring him back in this series, but he'll be back eventually because that's how comics work. Unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Well, whatever. And did you hear about all these other tie-ins? Apparently they don't matter at all. Oh, uh, are they just like, cause I know they were doing like they have Scarlet spider tie in. They have a um, iron fist tie in. They have a uh, other tie-ins. Yeah. I think apparently a lot of people are saying they don't like, like you yeah, said, they're tie-ins. tie-ins. Yeah. I mean, so. yeah, I don't know. Tie-ins are a mixed bag, also- but yeah. Also, did I get a variant cover again? I have Doctor Strange with the skull no, that's, pointing. That's the kind regular of. cover. Yeah, so regular one. Okay, that's I'll, I'll by the sure good artist from the first issue, uh, Rod Reese. Rod Reese. Uh, I liked the events of this issue a lot more than I did Damnation Number Two. I still think this art is pure doo doo. Please get it away from me. Really? I think it is garbage. This man posed all these characters. There is a specific sequence in this book. Where they've okay, got uh, Elsa Bloodstone, it's the red-haired character, and she's talking to Moon yeah. Knight while he's trying to lift this uh, hammer, and uh, she is in the exact same pose in four panels in a row from different angles, and it is further proof that, like this it, it whole issue looks, also those three those images of uh, Scarlet Spider and Iron Fist are the exact same images. Uh, but oh my uh, God. it is further proof that he is using 3D models and tracing them. So he literally took a 3D oh model God, you're of right. Elsa Bloodstone, rotated it, and traced it again. Uh, you're right. I didn't even notice that. You can tell in all his art Holy because shit. they're the weirdest, most stiff, awkward poses. Uh, like they don't look like an artist like naturally drew them. They look like they mo- posed a mannequin. Like, there's some weird panels of Moon Knight in, in this issue as well, where he's just in strange, awkward positions. He's running into a fight in this big two-page splash, and he's, like, th- it's the most deliberate, like, I'm, uh, I've been, I'm an action figure pose, and Iron Fist is just standing yeah. still. Like, these characters are supposed to look like they're, like, flying at each other. I don't know. Anyways... I harped on this issue last, this artist last time Damnation came out, and I don't want to, like, just shit on him more, but I, do you, I, th- I think you really need to get off the, is this Nick Spencer? what now? This is Nick Spencer? Nick Spencer is the other writer on this, because uh, it's co-written, oh, so it's co-written is... by Nick Spencer and uh, uh, Donny Cates, and then the art on this is Simon Kodransky. Simon? Uh, yeah, Simon. The first issue was done by Rod Reese. Awesome, amazing, very organic feeling, and then this dude needs to really stop using the 3D crutch because it's it's it doesn't look good. Um, anyways, huh? 
Weird. Okay. So wait, what you were going to say, I need to get off what? I was just going to, I think I was just saying like, I need to get off the subject. Uh, but. Okay, for sure. I also really like the idea that um, they teased Moon Knight being worthy, yeah. one of his <laughs> yeah. identities. Uh, although hold. I think they leave it vague as whether or not he actually was able to do that because, no, he no, totally he didn't. didn't. No, that would be a big reveal. <laughs> but I, yeah, that's, that's a, always a fun thing, seeing who tries to pick up the hammer and whether they're able to do it or not. Oh, is that an ongoing yeah, thing I mean, in, like, it, comics it, in general? Like, that's anytime Thor is separated from his hammer or whatever, someone's going to try to pick it up. <laughs> it was a big reveal in uh, Secret okay. Empire or Captain America, even when we're, it was Weird Hydra, Nazi Cap, uh, he he was able yeah. to pick up Thor's hammer. Uh, so, huh, yeah, that shit. was a big deal. Um, anyway, okay. my favorite, uh, or not favorite, but the, the book I wanted to talk about most this week was, was Thanos. We talked a little, a little bit about it. By the way, I didn't realize that, I didn't realize this was your pick. I, I forgot, I didn't read yeah, down uh, here that much. But, uh, I just, I'm just continually amazed by this book. Uh, it's written by, uh, Donny Cates, art by Jeff Shaw, and it's, uh, what part of Thanos wins is this? I don't remember. It's like part four or five. Part five. five. Um, it's his five. Next week oh, is the last yeah, one. Six issue arc. This thing. Uh, so this is Thanos wins part five. Uh, and it's the continuing story of Thanos has been pulled into the future to meet future Thanos. Uh, and they are trying to basically wipe out the last of the resistance in the galaxy uh, so that death will finally come to Thanos uh, because if anyone has not read any previous Thanos stuff, Thanos is obsessed with a character who is literally the embodiment of death and is named Death. And she is a woman and he loves her. Um, She isn't just Death? She is Death. Yes. She is Death. She is Death. Yes. Okay, thank you. So this issue is the two of them have a big face-off with this future version of the Silver Surfer. We talked a little bit about, uh, obviously, uh, it's a big, big old, big old fight there, but, uh, so it's the two of them and Cosmic Ghost Rider against, uh, against the Silver Surfer. They also call in, uh, a future version of the Hulk that apparently they have enslaved, sort of. An immortal Hulk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely ties into that idea that the Hulk is potentially unkillable. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, except, I guess, later in this issue. Yeah, they do. They do uh, wait, do, 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 does he die? I think he when dies. Does he die? I mean, he gets stabbed. Oh, that's right. The they chest. do stab him to the chest. But also, again, I think the idea is that. Bruce Banner can't die, <laughs> but maybe who knows? I don't. Maybe it's maybe it's divorced from that idea. This comic, I don't know. But yeah. also, I completely forgot that Hulk was in this series before. When was he in this? He was um, as a dog, like he was like being chained up like a pet. Um, oh, and that was yeah, when, he uh, was Frank in that Castle. room full of bones or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I completely forgot. I thought this was a complete I surprise at first. I forgot about that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. They did totally tease so. uh, Hulk being, like, his, like, pet. Uh, but, yeah, so th- I I really just want to talk about this because uh, I'm just continually surprised at how much, how skillfully Donny Cates, as a writer, is able to put you in the shoes of characters who shouldn't really be, like... Uh, like likable protagonists, but like you root for them anyways. Like, I don't yeah. know why, but like you want Thanos to, to win. And I like you, like this is the silver surfer versus Thanos. And like, mm-hmm. it, he's the last resistance in the galaxy <laughs> after Thanos slaughtered everyone. And yet for some mm-hmm. reason you're on Thanos' side in this. And I don't know that I can directly point to exactly why. I think it's just because they put you so much in his headspace. Like, I think, I think you do there. You do this like sort of subconscious mental gymnastics because 
they are putting you in such a foreign place yeah. where it's literally millions of years in the future. Like everything is lost. And I think your, your mind just kind of subconsciously says, okay, well, everything's lost. So what now? Who's trying to get something that wants something? And uh, does that, you know, matter to them? It does. So yeah. I, you know, if it matters to them, then I think Donny case does a good job in making it matter to you. So I yeah. think, I don't know. I think it's because it's so divorced from our, you know, concept of what li- like the universe is yeah. i think that's the reason like it's yeah but no it's still like it's just like it feels weird i i know what you mean like it feels weird that we're kind of rooting against silver surfer even though he kind of is doing good in a way yeah like when he re- interacts with bruce banner in this he's like oh bruce it's okay like we can we can this will all be over soon it's okay and it feels weird because it's like you're being nice. You're the bad guy, right? No, you're not the bad guy. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> they just have lots of small moments where they, like, they purposefully point it out, like, hey, like, you, th- this is the good guy <laughs> in this scenario. Like, you're rooting for the bad guy. But, like, yeah, it's all in the the scenario they've set up. It's very expertly done in, in the idea that it's this post kind of apocalyptic uh, version of the universe where, like, he's coming back to finish the job. It, like, it's all these subtle things that allow you to win mixed with the really great characterization of Thanos and like putting you in his headspace that like you do side with him in, in this fight, even as you like, you do logically know he's wrong. Like you, yeah. but like emotionally you're still siding with him. And I, I just think that's, that's really, really cool. Um, and yeah. not everyone Very is different. able to do that. Uh, well, because you specifically have a very um, specific idea about v- the use of villains in their own series, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it it can like I don't want to just read a series about just a person doing terrible things, but like it, this is just proof that like the right writer can do that well and can like tell a compelling story about about a villain because it's it's often just that like villains aren't compelling protagonists because they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> they're terrible people but like if you write them well enough and if you do enough to like make them the protagonist of a specific story where you're putting mm-hmm. their shoes like it works uh yeah this kind of makes me want to read one of those like worst ones that you know that maybe you've seen in the past like it kind of makes me want to see it like what the difference is you know what i mean yeah like uh jeff lemire wrote like an origin story kind of thing for thanos a while back and it was like uh, uh, let's let's look at Thanos's tragic past so that you like understand why he's this horrible person. And it's just like I don't know. Like it's different. It's not. I don't want to understand why Thanos is actually a good guy. I want you to emotionally put me in the place of of the bad guy while keeping him the bad guy. You know, like yeah. don't don't muddy that to the point where we're like excusing his villainy you know i don't know make me feel bad for feeling for him yes don't make yes. him good to make me feel you know what i mean yes yes I, th- I think that's the distinction right there that's exactly it yeah because it's more complicated feeling for the reader to yes. feel bad for f- feeling like you uh, are cheering for him or whatever yeah. like we're not actually empathetic for thanos it's it's but they're making you teeter on that edge you know yes where like yeah you you can see it but anyway yeah it, I, this book this book is great I, I everyone should be should be reading this uh it we're only five issues in and he's i don't know how much longer he's gonna be doing it so it's it should be a nice trade or two when it's done if you're not reading it currently but uh it definitely recommend yeah is donny kate's leaving thanos after this unclear they haven't said any because they haven't announced like another Thanos team. They haven't addressed yeah, Cos- it. Ghost Rider, Cosmic Ghost Rider. He's writing Cosmic Ghost Rider. Him. He's taking over Venom. Uh, I assume since they haven't said anything about it, he's continuing on Thanos. But I don't know. Uh, I hope so. I, I would love I to see so a different too. story, like because it seems like this is going to wrap up next issue. So I don't know. I mean, who knows? He might just. I don't know. I have no idea. But okay. I'd be really pumped. Cool. Cool. Um, what? Uh, oh, we got our panel of the week. Okay, cool. Let's do this. So, Doug, why don't you go first? Cool. 
So uh, I picked a panel from a book that you didn't read this week, so I I I got a got a scan of the page and I sent it to you. Oh, uh, look at but, you! Uh, so this is the end of this arc of Superman has been about. Uh, it's called Bizarro Verse, and it's about Bizarro and the the Bizarro world, uh, which is a planet out in the universe, uh, and. Oh, it's a planet, not a different universe. It's, it, it's they. It's a planet in this. That's weird, right? Nah, uh, it's gone through a million different versions. I like the idea that there's just a world out there that's like somehow weirdly linked to our world, and it's just like full of reverse versions of us. It's silly, and I like it. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, Bizarro. For anyone who doesn't know that basic concept is that there's a yeah there's uh an anti-superman named bizarro and he comes from a planet called hatre which is earth backwards uh and it's full of <laughs> reverse versions of of characters and anyway the panel i picked is at the end of this issue so this this end of this issue the, their planet is a cube Okay, so um, <laughs> of it's, like, it's, it like, it's like Earth, but it's a cube. <laughs> it's great. Oh my God. Uh, and anyway, so we get this like they're slowly the planet gets transformed by a mysterious force into a sphere, and then we oh. get like we get the reveal of who did this, and it's the Legion of Fun, and so uh, it's a Bizarro World version. Of uh, the Legion of Doom from the uh, Super Friends cartoon, <laughs> so it's okay. specifically it's it's the specific group from that cartoon in in that. So we have Lex Luthor, uh, and he has uh, and this is the panel. It's a big splash page. Uh, he's it's uh, Lex Luthor. He has a glorious mane of blonde hair, uh, and yeah. uh, we've got reverse versions of like. Uh, Black Manta, I believe, is that Cheetah? I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know who that character next to him is. Uh, uh, DC's, uh, other Scarecrow character, or maybe this is Batman Scarecrow. I never remember if the version of Scarecrow in the Super Friends cartoon is Batman Scarecrow. Anyways, it's a Scarecrow, uh, but he's got a big smiley face on his shirt. Uh, we got Captain Cold, but he's got flames on his parka. Uh, we've got the cheetah, but it's a oh, dude. That's, that's that also might be cheetah. I think I don't know who that other one is. Anyway, uh, we got Grodd, uh, and uh, Sinestro, but he's a Green Lantern. Um, yes, yeah, so it's just a really silly, fun panel of this. And Grodd is a white gorilla. Yeah, yeah, Grodd is a white gorilla. We got, and then in the foreground, we've got the Bizarro Justice League. Uh, so like bizarre versions of Superman and uh. Okay. Wonder Woman and all of them. They're in a in a they're so in a wait, ball pit and they're like dying or something. <laughs> so are the are the villains the good guys in the bizarre world? It's unclear at the moment because it does look like they're murdering the Justice League. Uh right? it's, it's always this weird, confusing line in Bizarro stuff where it's like on Bizarro World, good stuff is bad. So like but so like these are the theoretically the the villains in this world are the good guys theoretically but then they're the legion okay. of fun and there's they're all chanting fun 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 yeah and they're murdering people it looks like so That's maybe they're so still weird. bad guys <laughs> it's but very it's seen as good but yeah the, like yeah like they're doing evil but they call it fun um, oh my gosh. it's just, it's the silliest panel. They've got the Legion of Doom, like the, like the weird head base in the background behind them, but it's got these giant eyelashes. <laughs> it's so silly looking. So it's just weird. the silliest, goofiest panel. And I love it. And I'm confused what it means, but, <laughs> but it's hey, just fun. Whatever. Yeah. Weird. Okay. So that's in the Superman comic though. Yeah. This is in Superman number 43. Okay. Wow. So is he on Bizarro World then, and he's trying to? Yeah. Uh, Boyzaro, Bizarro Superboy, uh, came oh. to uh, came to Earth 
uh, and uh, to escape, they seem to be implying that Bizarro, his dad, is abusive. <laughs> huh. Uh, because he's like the anti Clark Kent, the anti Superman. So he's like not a good dude. <laughs> um, and so uh, Bizarro Superboy comes to, to Earth to escape that, and they go back with him to try to kind of figure out what's going on with his family. Oh. Okay. Um, huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, fun. That, that looks like a fun thing. I um, Superman seems really, really great. I'm really excited to read Superman when um, when Bendis is on it. Yeah. It's this, gonna be great. This run has been fun. I've teetered on the edge of dropping it a few times. It's it started off really strong, and then it like it's been good on and off since then. Uh, but uh, I am very excited for yeah for Bendis to take it over because I think he's gonna bring something new and exciting to it, uh, especially. N- not being a traditional DC writer. Okay. Right. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm it's, it's going to be so weird to see him on there. I mean, I haven't read a lot of Michael Bendis stuff, but um, you can tell me like what his sort of style is when we get there and like how that's different in this mm-hmm. publisher and the, these characters compared to Marvel. Mm-hmm. So, uh, okay, cool. Um, my panel of the week was an ice cream man. Number three. Which was, this is an image book, um, anthology horror series where an ice cream man goes around and brings, you know, things that are nice and treaty and delicious to people. And uh, they are, you know, instead fattening and will cause diabetes. Just saying that they are bad things looked at in, a, um, bad things that are introduced as ice cream, as good things. Yeah. Um, yes. so. This this particular issue is about a washed up guy who had a one hit wonder in like the seventies, um, and it's he, he's like you know in his sixties now and he's overweight and everything. He's trying to he's obsessed with recapturing that sort of um, uh, artistic um, fire that he had before. And so when he gets ice cream from uh, the ice cream man, he is plunged into this world. Uh, where all of these songs from the history are, and these characters from these songs are trying to, uh, get him to, uh, write a new song and to defeat the drips, the drippers, which are, I guess, drips of ice cream. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is really weird, but, uh, I yeah. really liked it because they have these, uh, references to songs. And my specific panel is when all the characters, the songs are sitting around a table and um, they have little bios of them underneath that have to do with the songs that they are in. So we have first introduced is Ruby Tuesday in a different panel, but it's Ruby Tuesday. Um, and I'm going to ask Doug, I'm going to take this opportunity. Doug, I think you should cue the quiz music over this because oh, Doug is going to have to tell me the artist of uh, each of these uh, characters from these songs. The artist that does the song. Okay, Doug? I, I, I'm gonna stop you right there. I'm not gonna be able to do yep, this. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'm musical so literate. You're, you're gonna guess. I'm very these musical all, literate. These are all songs from um, like 60s, 70s, maybe 80s. I think is one of them. Um, okay, here we go. I really Ruby don't know. This Tuesday. is very. This is gonna be very embarrassing. I've- this is the quiz. Ruby Tuesday. Her quiz. Her clue is no one can hang a name on her. <sighs> she looks like she's kind of a 70s. 70s rock kind of uh, kind of deal. Uh, I'm gonna go with Jimi Hendrix. No. <laughs> uh, goodbye, Ruby Tuesday. Okay. Who can hang? You don't know that song? I recognize the song. I don't know who that's by. It's actually featured in the in the movie Children of Men. If you ever saw that, Alfonso Cuarón. Okay. Uh, it's by uh, the Rolling Stones. Okay. Okay, so you got it wrong. Okay. Captain Jack, he'll get you high tonight. I know that reference, but I don't know what song it's from. Guess. Uh, It's a newer artist than uh, Rolling Stones. Plays the piano. Uh, I don't... I really don't know. Billy Joel. Okay. Okay. Eleanor Rigby keeps her face in a jar by the door. I... I don't know. 
<laughs> no way! I don't know who that is. That is bullshit. I know the, you know, I know the, I've heard this name before. Eleanor no. Rigby. Doesn't oh, is this the... the has been. No one is this the Beatles? Yes! Oh my god. Of course okay, it's the I knew Beatles. I once I heard the tune, but I don't... I don't know... <laughs> okay, here we go. Ziggy. He only has a swear word yeah, well, under his name. That one's David Bowie. Good job. The that name of the song. just literally David Bowie, and everyone's seen that image of him with the. The name of the song the... is. Mm, Ziggy Stardust. Good job. And what's a Ziggy play? I don't know what that means. Ziggy plays guitar. Okay. Well, that seems obvious. Okay. Rocky Raccoon. Uh. Again, I know. I know. I have heard all of these names before. I just I don't know what song or who sings them. Who does the song? Okay, I'll give you a clue. It was someone we've already said. Is this the Beatles again? Good job. Okay. Good job. He's fond of saloons and reads the Gideon's Bible. Were we just? Oh yeah, the Gideon's Bible part. I did make that connection to the Beatles when when I was reading this. But anyway, good job. Okay, now you know this one too, right? Major this, Tom really made the grade. This one's David Bowie again, isn't it? Are you... Is that your final answer? Uh, yes. Okay! Good job! It's David Bowie! Yay, okay. Doug! I got right, now, also, <laughs> what's the name of the song that Major Tom has featured in? Uh... Ground Control to Major Tom? I don't know. The name of the song is know. Space Oddity. Oh, sure. Okay. Okay, good job! I, again, I, the, I, I'm... I, people, I know there are people out there, if, if you're listening to this, who are just cringing <laughs> yes. at this entire thing. Listening to people who don't know about your favorite subject or whatever, or if you just like music, or are just not music literate like me, it's one of the most painful things in the world, and I apologize. I Shame. don't. I don't know anything about music. Shame on you. Um, and they have like little things in here. Did you even in, did you enjoy this issue, by the way? Because I wanted to know because they have a lot was, of little. I thought it was fun. Yeah, I know. Was... I I feel like I re- caught some of them, but like obviously, like a lot of the lyric references are going to go over my head. Yeah. Um. Like I love but... the Hendrix Straddle Blaster. They say goodbye to Ruby Tuesday, like and when she dies, and um, well, there's there's a bunch of other stuff. It's so great. I love it, and um. Um, but yeah, so I don't really know how this really fits. Like, I mean, how does any of this shit fit in this series? I was expecting us to go a little bit, a tiny bit back to the running plot stuff in this issue. And no, it's just another really weird, completely out of left field story. Yeah. Like that last one was. And I'm wondering if that's just what it's going to be for a while. Mm -hmm. Also, I wonder if the idea is that he's crying the drips of ice cream, or if he just literally slept in it. You know what I mean? Because uh, maybe that's what the image is supposed to say, but it looks like it's literally coming from his eye. I think like he's. Ducks. I think he's crying. Ice cream? I think no. I think he's. I think he's just crying. I think that's just water. Although there is ice cream all over the table. I don't know. I think he's crying ice cream. <laughs> uh, I don't think he's crying ice cream. I think he might be crying into the ice cream. But anyway, they don't make that clear. Uh, yes, this, this series is bonkers, and I'm, I'm, for the time being, I'm enjoying picking up every one of these and just being like, what the fuck is this gonna be? Uh, yeah. I'm wondering if that's gonna get old after a little bit, because they're all just, it's just horrible things happening to people. This whole story is just, like, this man wanting one last chance to write a song, and they, like, force him to try to write a new song, and he just mm-hmm. sings the same song that he's has done his whole life, and, yeah. and I think, and, ha- like... And then wakes up and is like, oh, God, that's all I'll ever have. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's the most depressing thing ever. <laughs> it is. But it's great. It's so I sad. love it. Oh, yeah. I love it. I think I love really like I'm really enjoying this. I'm a big fan. Um, but um, yeah, so that was my I like that. I like I like having references like that and these little things. And I'm glad yeah. I, I, I feel superior to you when I read. Yeah. Like that, cause mm-hmm. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so I have a couple small questions, and then we'll get out of here, okay? So, cool. Norin Rad. Okay, yep. the Norin Rad Silver Surfer thing, is that, like, kind of a Johnny Blaze, the Ghost Rider kind of thing? 
Like I mean, that's that's so- that's who what his name was before he was turned into the Silver Surfer. Now, like that's his real name. Yes, but he doesn't like transform back and forth. He's he's yes. just he is the Silver Surfer now. But so, he was uh he was an alien. He just looked like a per- like a human person, but he was he okay. lived on an alien planet. Um, called uh. Uh, I'll look it up. But he right. lived on an alien planet, and uh, Galactus showed up, and he was like, wanted to eat it. Hey, Galactus, please don't eat my planet. And Galactus is like, Hey, I don't have a herald right now, so you want to be my herald, uh, and then I won't eat your planet. And he agreed, and he made him the Silver Surfer. Okay, uh, so have there been other other s- Silver Surfers, like other heralds? Other, there have been other been, heralds, but um, they're not the, always Silver Surfer. They're not always Silver Surfer. Like for example, in in this series of Thanos, they uh, they revealed that Ghost Cosmic Ghost Rider uh, was the herald of Galactus before Galactus. We knew that but, already. Yeah. So um, yes. So like there have been other heralds of Galactus, but not other Silver Surfers, as far as we know. Uh, so they, why- he is from the planet Zen La. Okay, mm-hmm. so my question is also, why, like, <laughs> where does Galactus' idea for the Silver Surfer being his herald come from if it's not, like, a thing? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I don't know. Oh, you you're gonna make this random motherfucker a Silver Surfer. It's gonna be awesome. He's gonna silver. He's gonna have this board. He's gonna go around and have Cossack shit come <laughs> out of his hands. Like, how does he, like, just think of that? I don't know. He imbues him with the power cosmic, and that's what happens. But isn't that weird? <laughs> I don't know. Sure. Like this random thing is like, he's like nothing else in the universe, right? Uh, I mean, dude, I don't know. <laughs> yes, it is weird. I agree with you. What do you want? <laughs> also, why don't people just call him either Norin Rad or the Silver Surfer? You know what I mean? Like, pick one. If he's not changing back and forth, he just gets one name. Just pick him. T- pick one, right? Well, he's got two names, and everyone knows no. him. No, 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 no. If you're going to get... Okay, one person... Okay, then maybe this. One person shouldn't refer to him both as Norrin Rad and the Silver Surfer. If one person knows him as Norrin Rad, then they should only say Norrin Rad, because that is what Norrin Rad is now. Or if they only know him as Silver Surfer, just talk. say Silver Surfer. Well, Silver Surfer is just not as conversational a thing to call someone. Like, if I was talking to you, and I was just like, hey... Silver Surfer, what are you doing? Like, like if you're just talking to a person, I feel like you'd call them by their name if you knew their name. But maybe if you were being a little more formal, you might say, well, the Silver Surfer. Silver here. Surfer, we meet again. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like just It's whatever one. works like, for the particular line of dialogue. I don't know. Okay. Whatever. I'm, I'm bothered that Galactus just had a fucking trippy wet dream and came up with Silver Surfer. I don't know. He's a weird uh, cosmic space entity uh, that uh, eats planets. Galactus. So I don't. I, I. I can't. I don't. I can't like explain his headspace. You know. Okay. Okay. And also, I wanted to. We also read Justice League, and I wanted to ask: Is Red Lion basically like Black Panther? Uh, coming from Christopher Priest, who had a pretty lengthy run on Black Panther, uh, I would guess that he is supposed to be a take on, uh, on. Black Panther. So he seems uh, he like he's like an African he apparently guy. Previous, like... He apparently previously appeared in Christopher Priest's uh, Deathstroke book. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, but he apparently is a creation of Christopher Priest. I'm pretty sure he is supposed to be a take on, uh, like, a DC version reimagining of the idea of Black Panther. Like, he's uh, okay. he is their leader their king or whatever president. I don't remember. They, they say what his role is, but he's their head of state in some form. And he's also this character, red lion, who is a, a vigilante hero uh, with a suit made of a, we- <laughs> it's a metal substance that absorbs energy. And yeah. he's like securing the borders of this African nation. And like, but the whole thing is very much about like how, like you can't impose your, like, like different countries have different concepts of what, like, the ideas of what's right and wrong are different. Yes. Different cultures. Uh, and, like, from their perspective, he looks like a villain, but, like, also, like, there's some gray in there because, like, they just have a completely different way of looking at this whole scenario, you know? Yeah. Um, no, definitely. 
Although they do okay. drop the line saying that he was involved in some, quote, ethnic cleansing, so... Yeah. So, <laughs> that's, there, something. that's why I refer to it as gray, <laughs> rather than gray. he's actually secretly a good guy. But, um, yeah, but there's, but there's, like, there is definitely some, like, Over some murkiness in there as to whether or not the Justice League is doing the right thing. Okay. Well, yeah, man, that continues to be, I thought I enjoy that issue as well continues to be pretty pretty good I'm mm-hmm. excited um but in any case and i think next week is the last one or is it two from now it's 43 the last one or 42 uh, i don't recall but we're coming up on it okay in any case um that was fun fun little uh, episode doug mm-hmm. that's gonna do it for the week uh the absolute biggest thing you can do for us if you like the show is to give us a review or star rating on itunes and uh, if you enjoy what you heard, let someone know about us with your uh, mouth or with your mouse. Uh, we release episodes weekly on Sundays, uh, so be sure to check back next week, or you can subscribe and uh, never have to think about it. Just get the never-ending drip feed of uh, morphine into your, or comes covered into your system. Uh, we you can are do it. morphine. We are, this is we actually are. morphine going right into your ears right now, which is not probably yes. the preferred place to inject morphine into your body. Yeah, that actually really is bad. You probably get an ear infection of some sort, or just die, maybe. Probably die. You'd probably In die. In any case, um, you can do that on iTunes, not the morphine thing. You can subscribe or download on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Overcast, and Google Play Music. So whichever podcast you prefer, we've got you covered. In the meantime, before the next episode, you can find us on Twitter and Facebook under the handle at Comics Covered, all one word. You can find web archives of all our episodes at comicscovered.libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N.com. And video versions on our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. They go up at the same time as uh, the audio versions. So whatever you prefer, we've got you... Wait, why is this in here twice? <laughs> Whoa. I'm not making that. I added it in there, and that's the only reason I did the dumb joke this time. Ha ha ha. I'm oh, an evil. No. Uh, you got me. Fun. We almost Fun. made the horrible, unforgivable pun Fun. twice. Fun. <laughs> are you doing, are you Sorry. the justice, the, 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 uh, the Legion of Fun? The Legion of Fun. Uh, yes. With their evil ball pit. Uh, and, uh, if Sorry. you want to, uh, and, uh, you want to get a hold of us with a question or feedback, send us a message on social media, Facebook, Twitter, or at our email, comics covered at gmail.com. Uh, by the uh, way, we've, so we figured out something that you will read whatever is on that teleprompter on that copy. Uh, so I turn my brain off when, when I start reading this stuff, I'm going to have to not do that from now on because you're sneaking shit into here. Keeping uh, you on your toes. Uh huh. Uh, thanks again for listening, folks. I'm Doug. And I'm Doug. This has been Comics Covered. If you keep doing that every episode, no one's gonna know who we are. Thanks for listening. I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) Cheerio!